Hello? Hello? Hello, thank you for calling Chipotle. What can I get started for you today? Uh, welcome to your new career as a performer slash entertainer. Um, this is a Chipotle, sir. I think you meant to call Chuck E. Cheese? Uh, these tapes will provide you with much needed information on how to handle slash climb into slash climb out of mascot costume. Once again, Chipotle does not have a mascot. Chuck E. Cheese is right down the street. I can even give you the phone number if you want. Right now, we have two specially designed suits that double as both animatronic and suit. Okay, I really don't want to buy one of your suits. I don't even know where I'd put them. Remember to smile. You are the face of Ray Fazbear's pizza. Okay, whatever you say, sir. Have a great day. Okay, bye. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another video on FNAF. So before we get into the video, I just want to say a huge thank you for all of the support on the face reveal. I was really nervous for it, but your love and support helped me out so much. I set the video as a premiere so we could all watch it live, and at its peak, we had over 5,000 of you watching at once, which is literally insane. So if you haven't checked it out, please do. I did a Q&A and answered a ton of your questions. Also, if you haven't yet, feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitch. I plan on streaming a live Q&A and FNAF playthrough very soon, so look forward to that. Also, I have a Discord and Reddit if you want to join those. All of the links will be in the description. Also, subscribe if you want to. It's free and you can take it back anytime you want. <laughs> now, on to the video. So if you're a dedicated subscriber, you'll know that I predicted that we would get physical copies of the core FNAF games and Help Wanted. And I ended up being right. The official physical copies of the FNAF core collection and Help Wanted are officially available for pre-order on Amazon. The core collection looks to be only for PlayStation and Xbox, and Help Wanted looks to be only for PlayStation and Nintendo Switch. No word for when it'll be available for Xbox. The core collection will be available January 12th, 2021, and Help Wanted will be released December 15th, 2020. I think this is so awesome. This is the first time we will be able to actually hold the FNAF games in our hands. I honestly think all of the core FNAF fans are going to love this because I know I do. Now onto the next piece of news. So a little while ago, someone reached out to me and asked if they could put my video in their article, and I said sure. The article turned out to be about the top five things they want to see in FNAF Security Breach, and I really liked what they had to say, so I I thought I'd share some of their ideas. For the first one, they said free roam, and I completely agree. I think it'd be so cool to have free roam in this game. They also mentioned that it could be a possibility because Steel Wool had free roam in the Corn Maze minigame in the Curse of Dreadbear DLC, and I also agree. I feel like they did a great job with the free roam in that game, and I think they could do it again. Next, they say they want online hide and seek. So this is one I never thought about. They suggest that someone would be Vanny and the other person would be the kid running from them. I think this would be an amazing idea and would open up the FNAF games to a whole new audience. Multiplayer is a huge reason why a ton of games become popular. I haven't heard anyone talk about this idea and I think it's one of the best ones I've heard so far. Next, they say they want some unlockable classic gameplay elements. They suggest a minigame in the style of the core FNAF games with us as the night guard looking at the cameras and trying to protect kids from Vanny or any other killer animatronics. They said that we could shut doors and use speakers throughout the mall to inform the kids about where to hide. I think this is a fantastic idea and I think it'll be a fantastic addition to the game if they decide to add it. Next, they say they want some new lore with some nods to the old lore, and I agree that would be really fun. And finally, they want cutscenes that are more modernized and animated. I think if I were to put money on it, I would bet that this is most likely gonna happen. Cutscenes have been a major part of the FNAF lore, and I'm not sure if it would feel like a FNAF game without them, honestly. <laughs> now, onto the next piece of news. So if you're a hardcore FNAF fan, you know that the FNAF movie has been in production for about a thousand years. We first learned about the FNAF movie in April of 2015, and ever since then, it's been a roller coaster of switching studios and throwing away scripts. The most recent news we've gotten about the movie came from Jason Blum, creator of Blumhouse, which is the studio creating the FNAF movie. He stated that the movie was making good progress and that there was a good chance we were going to see a FNAF movie. But in an article released by Den of Geek, Jason Blum answered some questions about his upcoming movies and when they're going to be released. He said, We're shooting a lot of unscripted already. We're beginning to shoot our lower budgeted stuff, both in film and TV. The beginning, the first quarter of next year, Year is when we're going to start our first larger budget thing. We're definitely not up to where we were in 2019 at all, he admits. It just all depends on a vaccine. Put it this way, until there's a vaccine, I don't think we'll get the level of production that we had pre-COVID. I don't think we're going to return to that level until there's a vaccine, but next year I anticipate we'll make about maybe two-thirds as many movies as we were before. TV is a little easier because it's a little less expensive. TV will hopefully be similar to 19, not 20. So it looks like the FNAF movie won't start production until at least the beginning of 2021. 
timeline. So if they begin production and filming in the beginning of 2021, I think we could see the FNAF movie as early as the end of 2021, maybe even beginning of 2022 to be safe. This may sound disappointing at first, but remember, we don't want this movie to be rushed. I would rather have a great movie that they took their time on than a really bad rushed movie. So until then, all we can do is speculate. And that's exactly what Small Screen did. Small Screen wrote an article titled, Do We Really Need a Finance of Freddy's Movie? And Will We Ever Get It? I think a really big concern for FNAF fans is that the FNAF movie will flop like a lot of other video game movies. And I thought their opinion was really interesting. So I thought I'd share it with you. The article says, While screen adaptions of games, books, or comics often disappoint diehard fans of a franchise, the fact that the game creator is so heavily involved is reassuring. As he's penning the script, it is unlikely that the films will veer too off course to the original story. That said, naturally, people are going to draw comparisons between this and Slenderman. The 2018 Slenderman film notoriously got poor reviews. A key difference between Slenderman is that FNAF is contained within the fan base and the creator still has power over the narrative. Slenderman was conceived as a creepypasta in 2009 and became larger than the user who created him. Slenderman became a figure in other creepypasta and a recurring character in tales such as Marble Hornets, which also featured Slenderman in their movie, and where he's arguably the most recognized, the Slender Games. Whereas FNAF fans don't just love the games because of the jump scares and creepy characters, they're invested in the lore of the world. FNAF was seemingly everywhere when the first few games came out, as popular YouTubers like Dan and Phil and Markiplier uploaded gaming videos. For a lot of people, once the mainstream channels stopped playing circa FNAF 4 and 5, so too did their investment in the franchise. So one of the concerns with the film is, are there enough people left who care to see it? Shouldn't it have been made years ago when it was more topical? No. A rushed movie and a cash grab wouldn't have gone down well. The move from Warner to a smaller production company suggests that everyone involved knows the FNAF movie will be a cult classic. There's nothing wrong with that. Isn't it better to be loved more deeply than widely? I completely agree with him. I really do think the FNAF movie is a different story. FNAF is such a lore-heavy game, and the lore is a huge reason why the fans love it so much. A game like Slenderman was brought into popularity mostly because of the scary gameplay, but FNAF has grown legs in the gaming world almost strictly because of the amazing lore behind it. So that's why I think people will love this movie. I also think a big reason why this movie will not fail is because Scott is so heavily involved in the making of it. A lot of video game movies have given up their stories to the studios, but Scott won't do that. Scott has actually been writing the scripts for this movie, which is amazing. So that's why I think the FNAF movie will be a hit. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more FNAF themed content such as news, gameplay, and more. Also, follow me on Instagram, Twitch, Twitter, Discord, and Reddit if you want. All of the links are in the description. Also, once again, thank you so much for all of the support on the face reveal. It really means the world to me. With that being said, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Bye.